2 versus NEM 3. Hey, welcome back to another episode of Real Estate Solar Solutions. My name is Rock Thomas, one of the co-founders, and I'm here again with Alex in studio, and we're talking about NEM 2 versus NEM 3, what a lot of people talk about as the net metering rules, and a lot of homeowners don't even know how this work. I know that we were talking offset, mm -hmm. and Alex was talking about some of the systems he sold in California, and that a lot of homeowners still have trouble wrapping their head around how does that work. And I think that the utility companies are very happy to confuse the homeowners and the agents so that nobody knows what they're doing out there. So we're going to try to clarify that on this episode today. So you've been out there talking to homeowners prior to April 14th, 2023. Yes. And there's something called NEM2 mm -hmm. and NEM3. Mm -hmm. Why don't you give us a little bit of a conversation? I know there was a bit of a gold rush that happened. Oh, yeah. Because a lot of people were like, when they found out, you know, what the, the advantages were, they were trying to race in to get their systems installed. Mm -hmm. so why don't you talk a little bit about that? Well, the reason why people were racing in so much is simple. Because a lot, a lot of the benefits with solar uh, were being taken away in California anyway with that new change of rule as of April. And what net metering is essential is the relationship between the homeowner that has that pays the electricity and has, let's say, the solar system and the electric company. And so when someone has a solar system on a home, they're producing electricity. And so what they do is they will sell some of that electricity to the grid and then during the night buy some of the electricity back so that they can power home, power the house. Right. So that kind of transaction happened before where it was a one to one. And so I sell one credit of electricity to the grid to one dollar. They sell me back to one dollar. Okay. Um, after NEM, NEM 2.3, as you know, things change and that ratio was just not the same anymore. So NEM 2.0 was a relationship where it was one for one. Yes. And then April 14th, somehow the utility companies lobby. I don't mm -hmm. know who they're paying off or whatever the case is, but they lobby and they convinced um, the government to allow them to change that. And instead of giving back one for one, they actually are giving back. And I think the numbers go like this. The average is about 36 cents per kilowatt hour in California. Mm -hmm. And now instead of giving you back 36 cents, they give you back eight cents. Imagine eight cents, 75% tax. Yeah, yeah. You produce an hour's worth of kilowatt from your solar panels. They give you back 15 minutes. What? Are you kidding me? Can you imagine the difference it makes in the marketplace? Yeah. Crazy. No, and what's interesting is that California has such a high cost for utility costs. Just to give you a comparison, 36 cents per kilowatt. Imagine that it's, say, $3.60 for a gallon of gas in California. Well, where I have a home in Arizona, it's about 12 cents for a gallon of gas. You're not that or far. $1.20, which is one third, right? Costs yeah. less. And if you go to Texas or to Tennessee or some of the other states, it's even less than 10 cents. So the state that makes it easiest to go solar is obviously California. Yeah. And now, even with this tax that they put on, well, how are people pivoting now today when you're selling people solar systems? What are they doing to compensate for this reduction? They almost have to buy batteries. Batteries. It's kind of the only way to make up from for that gap. But obviously, they have to invest more money to be able to purchase those batteries, right? So what's the difference in buying a battery and, and just using the utility company as a battery? Yeah, well, that's the thing. Usually, the relationship you have with the grid, it's because you're using them as virtual battery. Right. When you have batteries with your system, your energy gets stored within those batteries, so you don't have to have the transaction with, it, with the, the grid anymore. So you store the energy during the day in your batteries, yeah. and then you pull it out of your own batteries at night yes. with zero tax on Yes, it. yes. Your uh -huh. batteries are not overcharging you. Okay. For that credit. Yes. And so the person who is going to sell a property, yes. that is NEM2, mm -hmm. they're grandfathered in for 20 years Correct. with the utility company to have the use to use them as a battery for that period of time. And when you go to sell that house versus somebody that doesn't have solar mm -hmm. or somebody that has solar that has batteries, that person that purchased the batteries had to pay more for their solar yes. system, right? Yes, yes. So let's take an example. Let's say you know you sold a system to somebody for $40,000 and they got, say, I don't know, 40 panels. Yeah. Then after April 14th, you sold to a similar, their neighbor, 
mm -hmm. 40 panels, but you also sold them three batteries. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. possible, right? Yes. The batteries would cost about how much? Close to 30 grand for three of them. Okay. Depending on the batteries you take, I'd say at least six grand a battery can go up to 12. Okay, yeah. perfect. So 20 to $30,000 extra for batteries. Yeah. These two people go to sell their property. Mm -hmm. Does it make sense that you need to look at their history of their utility usage to verify what's happening? Yes. You also need to look at the contract to mm -hmm. see if there's any guarantees. As you mentioned on another video, there is some fine print to make sure the guarantee gets transferred over in a timely fashion. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and to make to respect the delay as well for that transfer to have for property. Okay. Right. And so you check that contract. Yeah. And then the homeowner now is going to try to get as much as they can for the solar system because mm -hmm. in California, when you're paying 36 or 40 cents for utility, your average bill isn't 150 like it is in some parts of the country. It's more like four, five, six, seven, eight hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. So you're talking about a substantial savings yeah. over the course of 20 years, right? Mm -hmm. So you might have, let's say you're saving six hundred dollars a month, that's seven thousand dollars a year yep. over 20 years. Mm -hmm. You're talking about $140,000. The compounded effect on this is crazy. Yeah. And you're not even accounting inflation here, right? Right. And the number you've made. Now, is it true <laughs> that part of the package that you provide for the prospective purchaser is yeah. to show them yeah. through a graph exactly how much they'll save over that period of time? Exactly. Yeah. And then that helps to convince the purchaser to feel positive mm -hmm. about purchasing this system. Mm -hmm. And it helps to justify to the appraiser also the value. The value. Right. So if you're thinking of selling your home and you have an M2 or an M3, would it make sense to have a conversation with somebody like Alex to make sure that you're lining up all your ducks and you have a way to present that to the prospective purchaser? Mm -hmm. What did I miss? Huh? I mean, nothing. <laughs> okay, good. Now, what I know is, is that, you know, you create a marketing package. Yeah. That includes all of these elements yes. so that the agent has the easy button yes. when they're going to market the property. And from what we've discussed, it really comes down to three phases. The agent in the listing presentation competing against another agent that has no solar literacy is going to be in a position with the marketing package to win the listing over easier. Win the listing, but I'll also be able to guide the client properly, right? That's our job as, as realtors. Our number one job is make sure that we do a service and a favor to, to, to the homeowner. Now, is the homeowner really well serviced by someone that doesn't understand the language of a solar system when there is solar in the home? That's something that you know needs to be discussed as well. You know, it makes me think of back in 2008, 2009, for those of you that remember, something happened in the economy back then. And there was this thing called foreclosures and short sales. And there was a bunch of agents that ran out there to get their certification for that. And then they were enabled to actually do those transactions. And there's a lot of agents that sat on the sidelines thinking this is going to blow over mm -hmm. and it's not going to be such a big deal. And they missed out on all this business. Yeah. Yeah. Would you say that um, agents that are going to get solar certified are going to be in a similar position? 100%. 100%. There are some agents who are going to be proactive in taking the edge and other agents, unfortunately, are going to be left behind. And you got to be honest and see how the marketplace is changing. And if you want to be able to grow within that marketplace, you got to adapt to where it's going. And every agent out there, they want to take a piece of that marketplace to bring it home, right? Yeah. But if you don't have the tools or the, the people surrounding you to allow you to do it, to do that, it's going to be very difficult. And knowing how to market solar homes is probably what we're seeing right now, how the marketplace is pivoting, that every agent should get proactive if they don't want to get left behind. Yeah, we call it the market of the moment is learning how to talk solar with your homeowners. And in fact, you maybe want to be one of the first people in your neighborhood that could actually go out there and say, hey, I'm solar certified. I know how to represent you when solar is involved, whether on the buy or the sell side, because I got solar certified with Real Estate Solar Solutions. And then you could actually not run away from the solar deals, but you can move toward them, use your marketing, and yeah. then you could start to be that person that really understands it. And it's it's complicated, but it's not impossible to understand. Would you yeah. agree? Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, it is complicated. I wouldn't say it's complicated, it's complex. Right. Okay. It's complex, but it's not complicated. All you need to do is, you know, have the right people around you once again that can educate you, guide you, coach you on to what are the things you need to learn and what you need to educate your client uh, when it comes to solar. Right. 
but all of those things, I mean, we've we've coach, coached an agent through that process, right? In the beginning, it sounds a little bit like a foreign language, but uh, the once you get through it, then the more the more you learn, obviously, and then after going through a few transactions and then calling you or calling me and having that that support, showing up to you know the Zoom meetings we're hosting or going onto the uh, Facebook group page and you know having access to that kind of resource center. Through that process, an agent is become uh, becomes able to be very competent and knowledgeable when it comes to sales. Yeah, so one of the things that we help people do when they're moving into that and they want to become a specialist is we have uh, weekly calls and we go through scenarios together. We had one as an example with a client who wanted to sell their home, but they realized that they needed to change the roof. Mm. It was older and they had solar panels on it. And it was, I think, nine, nine years since the solar panels had been installed. And so they couldn't get hold of the company that had installed them. And so they didn't know what to do. And they were looking for people to remove it. And somebody quoted them $12,000 to remove it. Mm -hmm. And then their agent spoke to one of our solar specialists. And they were able to get it done for $3,000 with the right person. And so when you have access to the right information and the right network of people, mm -hmm. you're not going to get ripped off because it is an unregulated business. There's a lot of people that, frankly, don't know what they're doing. Yeah. And maybe even not maliciously, but they're like, oh, I don't know what I'm doing. I guess I better buffer this. There's no competition on people taking solar panels off the roof. Mm -hmm. Why don't I throw out a crazy number there at 12000 bucks? Yep. And so those are some of the things that, you know, you'll gain an edge and advantage on. So make sure to follow us, like us, subscribe, hit the bell, ring the door, whatever you're going to do. Who knows? But, you know, follow us because we're going to keep you informed on Real Estate Solar Solutions. Alex, it's always a pleasure having you on the show. Likewise. Thanks for having me.